न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद जयमाल रत्नायक A very good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Face to Face. Tonight we have with us Mr. Tilanga Sumati Pala, former member of parliament and also former deputy speaker of parliament. He is currently the general secretary of the United People's Freedom Alliance and the Freedom People's Alliance, a newly formed coalition. He is also the vice president of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Mr. Sumati Pala, let's uh, get the ball rolling on a political point of view. you are the general secretary of the freedom people's alliance a brand new coalition that is embarking on a new political trajectory where does it stand in the larger political spectrum of sri lanka well i mean uh, it's of course uh, led by sri lanka freedom party right slf has been the leader in the left movement right throughout since 1950s right obviously so uh, our alliance was uh, upfa mm. which we formed in 19 2004 right uh, and of course bulat kole yes known as so then uh, uh, after the last election mm. uh, we have agreed to work together with porto mm. for the presidential and the general election mm. then there was a severe demand for upf to come back again with all the left parties put together right more than 12 parties and then uh, over 16 uni- units and so on uh, different pressure groups and so on and so forth yes then after i became the general secretary of upf mm. about a year ago mm. and when we about to embark on a grand coalition right. uh, with uh, more than 40 members of parliament okay the people who went against the wish of the party who joined this government who has taken over uh, ministerial portfolios they have gone to courts and file action against the upfa right so january this year we when we wanted to go for an election we we had no choice but to form a new alliance mm. under the helicopter mm. called uh, freedom people's alliance and otherwise it's uh, nidhas janata sandani right so it was very powerful it was mm. very strong we had top people uh, who have never had any blemish track, track record and good politicians like to name a few like uh, honorable dalas sala perma glp is right. from this side you know that city the other side hanreapa okay then uh, sudarshini mm. and then, uh, you name it uh, vimal gamampile uh mr divguna sekara with uh, tisavitar no? yes uh all the people who mat- what matters uh, mm. in the alliance got together mm. uh, obviously people who left the government who mm. are no longer with the government mm. was the fpa otherwise the hasan tasanda mm. the independent mps yes mm. and uh, It, let me put it this way. everyone who worked together right. with uh, sri lanka uh, podujana peramuna mm. after uh, rajapaksas have been you know uh, ousted from uh, power yeah um, before that long okay. before that when they found you know the the, the promises the line of thinking mm. uh, uh, the our economic policies are not being properly handled and then mm. the uh, little bit of uh, you know uh, lips at a uh, crowd of people are running the country and the government and so on and so forth yes obviously whoever has voted and supported gotabe rajapaksa mm. who were against ranil vikramasinghe and the unp predominantly who never wanted to wanted to work with jvp that's the group who were thinking who about are forming the form- freedom people's alliance correct mm. so then obviously half takes uh, you know the postponement or suspension of the general, uh, the local government election right we decided to go on to our own villages and just maintain our uh, the uh, the presence political presence mm. exactly and then uh, make sure that the rhythm continues and keep in touch with the people mm. but of course uh, we are meeting uh, i mean uh, even next week we are meeting as a executive committee and then we mm. are working towards it uh depends you know that was a local government election uh, things are changing and moving every week mm. every day mm. uh at the ground level due to the uh, national level uh crisis yes. this government is uh, you know embarking on every mm. day 
so that's where the upfa and 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 uh, the fpa uh, are yeah, currently that's and that's and that is right so let's let's talk about the sri lanka freedom party because you like you rightly mentioned the sri lanka freedom party is the majority party there and the sri lanka freedom party since the 1950s has had power over sri lanka it has governed the country it has established governments and so on and it was a political powerhouse yeah. that was formed by swr dibandar naika do you believe at present the slfp still has the appeal of the general public as a political powerhouse well let me put it this way i mean if you look at traditional parties mm. per se like unp slfp or a uh, name jvp yes. yes none of these parties can come to power all by themselves okay that is proven beyond doubt uh, that is why sajith and them decided to vacate unp and they got 52 members while ranil wickremesinghe had to go down to one one so uh, uh they've learned their lessons now mm. i mean we have been always i mean if you look at samagi raj in 1970 mm. upa for was i mean then podu peramuna was yes. in 1994 with mm. chandrika bandar nai kumar tung true had that alliance mm. then we came with uh, midleaf uh, in uh, 2004 mm. we have always been leading the left mm. or centric middle path mm. and always with uh, against the policies of uh, UNP and and the if i may call it west yes so we are the because of slp is predominantly a central okay uh, economic policy party mm. uh, of course towards the left mm. uh, we are not I mean, we were formed while there was a sam samaj and communist party was on one side yes. and unp which is a uh, totally a uh, capitalism and you no know, uh, right wing party right wing party yeah so that uh, the reputation respect and the uh, the public appeal yeah uh, we were always working towards the people mm. and um, uh, benefit of the people and so therefore reputation of slp is a people's party you know mm. uh, they have a heart they have a feeling for people that's the perception of slp so we represent that truly and squarely there's mm. no doubt about it right so since we are in the topic of politics let's talk about uh, next year and beyond we know that next year a presidential election is supposed to be held a general election is supposed to be held a very exciting times ahead uh, for the SLP. fp and also the freedom people's alliance come election season next year regardless of which election is held first is the fpa ready to field a candidate of their own for the presidential election absolutely absolutely if you look at today uh, i mean uh, breakaway group of uh, unp mm. uh, though they are very strong at the moment mm. on field more than unp right that doesn't mean they have a majority uh i mean the uh, jvp d- decided not to work with jvp you know yes. any longer so they formed an alliance yeah that is a uh, npp yes the the national people's party national people's party because they knew mm. no longer you can have a uh, hard line uh, uh, jvp left party yes to make anywhere mm. you know they can't make it so if that is the case mm. Uh, I mean if you look at the uh, the alliance led by SLFP mm. we have the experience we are the people who have done and formed government after government mm. uh, SLFP had prime ministers presidents uh, more than 35 years in this country in the right. past yes so therefore very clearly our alliance will lead the elections mm. give the direction mm. at the next election come what may because if you look at uh, if i mean unp uh, has gone down to single part yes. single uh, mm. seat in parliament so the executive presidency was given to him by uh, rajapaksa family yes so uh, that the was 133 mp's in parliament not the rajapaksa family but that was the biggest ever mm. uh, mistake mm. uh, and and a betrayal mm. happen in political scenario in this country why do you say so? political history mm. you see Uh, we all have worked mm. Mm. with a uh, saubhagya dakma yes and then we have got a mandate mm. all right president uh, gotabe couldn't mm. perform what up to the expectation he, but he envisaged this absolutely so but then mm. it should have been within the party mm. within the alliance of uh, sri lanka podujana peramuna should have formed a prime minister right and then successor should have been the premier to become the president okay how on earth a man who worked against this alliance right uh, 
directly indirectly for last 50 years no worked way. against the alliance of mm. the left movement been called upon to take over the premiership mm. and to give the prior presidency it mm. was a deal between the family of rajapaksa and the uh, current president mm. so uh, there's no mandate for him to mm. hold that position i mean you can't blame him mm. he's doing his best what he believes in yes so his best is not good enough mm. for us to convert this country into a better place mm. so that is a that i mean that is a foregone conclusion yes. because that is why his if, if his policies were rejected mm. he was mm, not even allowed to come to parliament from mm. colombo district we ran colombo for so many years mm. and uh, for him to get about 15000 votes for the party in, uh, or something like that in colombo uh, i don't think uh, that means it's very clear mm. his policies rejected his leadership been rejected he was not been fit and proper to be walking into the parliament that's the thinking of the people right for such a person mm. to be invited to be the premier and to be the president of this country so uh, why are we went wrong mm. economically policy wise administration wise we done everything wrong in the last few years okay so how for you to take it back number one we need to have the public trust right the public confidence will come if they give you a mandate mm. so we, we here is a president who is not willing to go for for elections yes that means he is scared of going for election mm. he knows if he goes for any election local government general election president he has no chance mm. so he is going to make sure he maneuver here and there and make everything possible for him to sustain in power until mm. he goes off mm. so if there is no political stability how can you bring economic stability right if you can't run without fdi mm. you can't invest our money we have no money to invest for mm. technology mm. therefore for uh, what we are looking at is a uh, true investors or people who can really come in sri lanka mm. into colombo mm. uh, invest them uh, in in technology bring some factories and manufacturing plant mm. or whatever go into it so first thing what they look at the policy wise with the country can continue their economy tax policy or principles and then the political stability mm. infrastructure manpower whether there is skillful manpower yes. in that country mm. when you look at that my good here is a country mm. after two and a half years a president has been sent home mm. so where is the political stability whatever this government is saying is not going to last more than a few months mm. so everyone is there is no confidence therefore every investor is saying okay wait and see mm. this is not the place don't touch sri lanka yet this is not the place to go to it's yeah. a lovely country mm. with a curse mm. the political curse so let just you know wait till the right time mm. so if we are going to recover this economy right number one mandate has to be shown to the world right you go for an election whoever wins he is a duly elected prime minister duly elected president mm. they have a clean four to five years they can't just win they have to show their kind of a manifest and then yes. con- confidence has to come in once a, there is an election and stability comes into the political forum obviously everything else will fall into place mm. now you know we have more than 40 billion um, uh, a debt mm. which we have not serviced for almost nearly 2 years now mm. so we have a foreign reserve of, of little over 3.5 billion dollars yes so out of that if we had paid our last two years one and a half years of uh, foreign debt mm. you would have been end up paying 100000 uh, maybe 100 100 million dollars or so on mm. so therefore obviously anybody will look at it and look my goodness this is a country they need so much more mm. to do uh, i think leave aside politics we are in this position because year after year election after election mm. we have elected the wrong people for the wrong job right so who has done it mm. the public the people the voters of this country right so if you have made the wrong choice if mm. you have made the wrong people at the wrong place at the wrong time mm. obviously no point blaming a b c past president this president that prime minister the whole country to be blamed mm. so situ- situation are like that mm. we all have to sacrifice to rebuild this country Okay. now we, i give you an example mm. when we had the uh, qr code right we were very careful with our fuel consumption mm. because we know we only have so many liters we have to run the week so it's self regulated we have to manage mm. the moment you take the qr code off 
we just don't remember even mm. we just take it easy mm. so one example so this is a country you need to give the direction mm. by the authority do this then people will adhere people will follow the uh, the the direction right but once you open it up mm. the amount of wastage amount of consumption uh, i mean the consumption of, of uh, electricity mm. so just go here why mm. so therefore i think the whole country will have to have a plan mm. uh, and it has to be articulated by the leadership yes i said look we have had enough of these things mm. enough is enough mm. let's get our act together mm. these are things that we can do these are things we must do yes these are things that we have to do mm. to convert transform this country into a developed place okay but that cannot be done only by mm. policies and by principles mm. giving speeches meeting foreigners mm. meeting uh, imf meeting mm. foreign countries you can't do only by that okay you can't do uh, or convert this in by way of only a pr exercise by the leaders and the people who are in power mm. we got to understand and go down to the grass everyone mm. must participate they should know mm. we are in trouble therefore we all have to do something we have to sacrifice mm. instead this government has chosen we must improve government revenue mm. how do you improve your government you have to tax mm. tax after tax and taxing is going increasing every day right so you are putting the situation from bad to worse mm. a small and medium industries are gone down they have never been looked after even especially after la- last 18 months okay 14% interest went to 28%, 29%. You don't even have 20% profit margin. Okay. Not even gross profit. Mm. How can you pay 28% to the bank? Mm. So all the small and medium industries have been totally hammered. Mm. So there is no concession for them. Mm. So then the moment small medium industries are going to shut down. Mm. We have over 75,000, more than 75,000 to 100,000 mm. shops. The manufacturers have gone mm. bankrupt. So at least two, two to three people, maybe hundred people have been working for those people. Mm. All of them are unemployed. Mm. So the minor circulation has stopped. So interest rates going up against the industry mm. has killed us for the last eighteen mm. months. For traditional businesses, mm. have been there for years, been suffering now. So, so you, Mr. Mudipal, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I want to uh, raise this point before we go beyond yeah. this and. Uh, address the matter of small and medium scale enterprises and electricity uh, and so on you mentioned that the people have gotten it wrong during every election since independence but it should also be mentioned that the SLFP was also in power of course and you have fielded candidates that you felt were the best choice for the people to govern the people and to lead this country towards development so don't you believe that the SLFP is all to also to be blamed yeah. at some point in time for the mismanagement and the crisis that Sri Lanka has undergone Sri Lankan Freedom Party mm. has to be taking the responsibility mm. we can't run away from that right all the political parties in power now mm. and who have, who are represented in the parliament all of us have, whether it's a smaller way or big way yes some or other we have contributed certain negative factors so there is a certain sense of accountability absolutely right. that we can't run away from that Understood. but we have learned through our experience mm. and learned through all our mistakes let's have a genuine mm. debate on that mm. discuss on that make sure our national plan of action is in place okay. policy is in place mm. and there is some kind of a monitoring okay so there is a proper regulation mm. and you see we believe in mm. industries to be given support mm. financially mm. technology wise bring top partners in mm. give them proper tax concessions yes. and regulate mm. government going to put their hands into running business mm. is not the order of the day the government should be the facilitator plus regulate right. because it, okay. there are certain uh, industries mm. you need to protect the public interest okay otherwise you know you can't have monopolistic situation in the private sector 100% yes. mm. and uh, you know uh, cre- creeping everything away uh, from the people so so l- let's talk about key sectors in sri lanka let's talk about the the power and energy sector do you believe sri lanka is losing its energy sovereignty we know that there are reforms happening especially uh, in the wake of electricity hikes and a new reform bill is to be uh, presented and enacted do you believe sri lanka is losing its energy sovereignty by privatizing uh, the electricity the power sector in the country uh, jamal it's a very 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 important question i mean out of all the sectors 
we have to be very very carefully manage our energy sector mm. i'll take you one example now we are a country blessed with solar uh, or the sun yes so the solar power where are we now not even 2% mm. we've been talking about this for last 30 years it's solar power is coming on board what have we done we gave rooftops about say 20 rupees 21 rupees okay or so on so mm. then it has gone up to 28 rupees 36 rupees a kilowatt hour yes then dollar from 200 dollar rupee a dollar went up to 320 yes so for you to import your panels mm. and install in your house mm. if it was 150,000 150,000 rupees a kilowatt yeah it had gone to 350,000 rupees a kilowatt yes so if you want to have 10 kilowatt it will cost you 3 and a half 4 million rupees yes then what happens is anybody is going to invest that kind of money with 20% or 25% interest rate in the bank yeah you need to have at least 40 rupees per mm. kilowatt hour from the cb mm. cb can't pay means the the solar can invest so there that is a kind of thing the government must, must chip in mm. reduce the interest rate right support the sector to mm. manufacture or go into the solar business mm. and also cb to make sure that they pay more do you support the the notion of privatization in the power and energy sector no i'm coming into this mm. now the solar power cb can't take it because solar is manufactured given to the national grid from 6 yes. in the morning till 6 in the afternoon once the sun go down there is no supply there's no generation yes that is why the world has invested into solar battery energy mm. so if there is a storage mm. you collect your energy mm. up until 6 o'clock after 6 till about 10 hour peak hour you give your storage energy to the national grid okay then the storage will cost you mm. at least 40% of the cost of the solar mm. then if the government can say okay if you are having solar storage and you give me a kilowatt in the after, after 6 okay. till 10 yes we pay you 50, 60 rupees a kilowatt okay it is far better mm. than wasting money on diesel mm. far better than giving someone 95 rupees to 100 rupees a kilowatt hour mm. for generators mm. and thermal energy mm. and taking our revenue away from the country right so storage is mandatory mm. that is the future mm. that is the order of the day what is our tariff for storage so these are the things policy wise mm. this government has no vision mm. uh, they are not keen to look at it right and uh, it is not been properly articulated or handled we can bring if you look at say 20 years from today we mm. want to have solar power or alternate energy uh, 40% from where we are now in 10 years another 30 30% by in another 10 years mm. if there is a vision you look at the energy saving currency saving uh, exchange saving mm. and the efficiency and all that and the government will take it as a policy you mm. go to any bank in the world right. you call, go to edb adb imf mm. uh, world bank there are so many other private banks yes you can bring minimum minimum you can even go for 2 to 4 billion dollars mm. worth of money you can bring into the country provided mm. we can show there is a business plan the energy sector mm. collect your uh, solar mm. and you have storage retain it which is what 55 60 rupees a kilowatt hour that is against 320 us dollars a rupee a dollar yeah supposing the dollar goes to 280 mm. supposing dollar go to 250 mm. then they, that always tariff can be reviewed yeah. then the government can't lose yes so the the when i looked at how uh, primitive mm. how how i mean it's so sad to look at the way it's going down and we are talking always complaining about cb there are even so many sal- generators so, breaking it, down always complain mm. cb got nothing to do with it mm. it's a policy driven by the government Uh, authorities mm. and sustainable energy authorities got a fabulous plan mm. and they understand the business very well but that cannot handle by a uh, regulator but it's not being uh, implemented and this has to be driven from the top mm. i mean you look at uh, usa mm. last year set aside 1.7 trillion mm. 1.7 trillion for the storage power 
Mm. So the gov- the ma- battery manufacturers, storage manufacturers are fully aware. Yeah. There is a grant at four dollar four percent interest rate or two mm. percent interest rate. They go for bidding. There's there's a fund available. Mm. They get the funding, manufacture, manufacture, and they they supply for the demand. To the grid. Mm. So even here we can do the same. Right. But who is talking about it? We are wasting time on various issues and parliamentary various you know uh, petty potty things. Wasting ma- time every day morning talking about some issues. Mm. I mean, it's, you, people are sick of it. People have no confidence because we must give them a result-oriented plan, right. a workable plan. Mm. Why we are in trouble today? Mainly, number one, our consumption is huge. We consume more than what we can afford. Yes. we import more than we export mm. local gov- local manufacturers have gone down we have switched from our industrialization into service sector so our industries are all suffering yes so if the industries are not underpinned and supported mm. how on earth can you believe that there will be more employment so the people are very sad they are mm. very frustrated the young mm. generation feel we have no hope they use this country there are many people leaving the country you can't blame them because what are they hearing they are not hearing any positive uh, news news mm. about you know there is a hope mm. people are leaving because they are in a hopeless situation if there is a hope then they will always think okay there is a plan there plan mm. here there are good people mm. they are they are, they are thinking they for the vision and they have partners they can bring the partners uh, to the country uh, to the country to the mm. country and there can be a drive mm. so we are, we can't be always talking about what has what has happened in the past mm. and uh, criticizing and being critical about the people who had done wrong mm. and try to bring them back again mm. if they are done with thank you very much go forward mm. have some vibrant game plan we can always turn with this around look to the future and not the past is the essence of uh, what you are saying am i right mrs udipale yes and uh, that's the way it was on face to face this friday night thank you very much mr tilang sudipala for joining me and discussing a plethora of uh, matters from politics to the energy sector reforms that are required uh, and uh, thank you very much for joining me this evening thank you so much uh, i'm happy that i was invited to say a few words certainly on behalf of uh, our alliance certainly we were joined by former member of parliament tilang sudipala he is the general secretary of the upfa and also the freedom people's alliance as well as the vice president of the sri lanka freedom party thank you very much for joining in on this friday night take care and good night mm-hmm.